Do you want to know the top five rarest leopard geckos in the hobby right now? Then stick around in this video and find out. Selling in the billions each year, Rainbow Mealworms is your one-stop shop for all your insect needs. Their quality feeders and A-plus customer service keep me coming back to support the health and growth of all of our animals. Visit them today at rainbowmealworms.net to place your order. Now, leopard geckos have been around in the hobby for a while, but there are some morphs that just outshine the others. Starting off at number five, I'm gonna say is actually the red diamond leopard gecko. Although this can kind of fall into the not so rare category, it was tough for that number five spot. And to me, I think it's a little bit more unique and rare than the other contenders that could have taken this spot. This is a morph that was coined and created by Barry Gardner of only tangs. As the name states, he loves tangerines and focuses on only tangs. Through the years of creating this line, it started to develop a really unique look to it. That look would include, but is not limited to, a decently colored tangerine or orange gecko with a lot of white coloration on it for the first couple of months. Now, the reason I say the first couple of months is because leopard gecko colors go through a vast amount of changes across their life and the white coloration that starts in the red diamond leopard gecko, that coins it, that very unique name and look, oftentimes will fade out and disappear a little bit, or a lot sometimes, as the gecko gets older. So here's some red diamond leopard geckos that are already older, and you can see that compared to when they're younger, they don't show nearly as much white. Now the white coloration from albino leopard geckos typically stems from what would be darker pigment, either black or greenish pigment on a non-albino. Now, I've never seen anybody call a red diamond that is not albino a red diamond, so I think for now it's safe to assume that to be a red diamond, officially, it also has to be Tremper Albino. Moving on to slot number four, and some of you guys might want to rank this higher than this, is the Joker Project. Matt Baronic of Sasserbeck Reptiles has coined the Joker Project as being slightly different from his original clown project. Both projects looks amazing, but the Joker Project has different blood infused into it. Some of that blood that he's mentioned is Firebolt, Black Knight, and Mandarin genetics, into the clown genetics to create this new, darker, deeper, contrasted gecko, as you can see from these photos, coining it the Joker Project. Now, a lot of people were going back and forth on whether the Joker Project should be called something different than the Clown Project. To me, any breeder that's working a unique project and wants to market themselves, I'm okay with that. I think there's nothing wrong with that from a business perspective. Matt does claim that the Joker Project is just him continuing his line of clown from 10 years ago when he originally left the hobby for the exact look and phenotypic expression that he wants to go for. And since the Joker Project does have different DNA in it than a normal clown project, I think it's safe to say that Matt's in the right to rename it, mark it, and work the project as he sees fit. Okay, moving on to gecko number three in the countdown is the Black Knight Lava Leopard Gecko. Now, I love the look of this leopard gecko sometimes it has a kind of purplish look to it and again a lot of these colors can fade out as time goes on but the goal of a breeder is to make these colors and contrast last longer and longer into adulthood and i have no doubt that this breeder holly exotics up in canada will accomplish this in time it's a great project it's super rare you don't really even see it in the united states or across the world really just in canada where she's at i'm sure there's a lot of people working along these lines but she's definitely one of the people to have marketed it and exposed it as a new and exciting genetic combination to pursue. Had she been in America, I think it really would have took off a lot more, but shipping, exporting, and importing geckos from even Canada can be a little bit difficult, and it can make breeders think twice about buying into a project. Now, this leopard gecko obviously is tangerine. I believe she uses the bloodline of tangerine or mandarin 
combined with the Tremper albino gene to create an albino leopard gecko that has orange hues. And instead of white pattern, where a normal albino would have white, because of the Black Knight genetics infusing dark melanistic color into the chromatophores of the gecko skin, it gives the gecko almost this purple sheen-ish look, which is really, really cool. Number two on the list, is gonna be none other than Gecko Boa's Cypher Gene. This is really exciting for leopard geckos because it's rare in leopard geckos for actual new genes to pop up. There's only been a few that have popped up over the last decade. And this one was discovered maybe six or seven years ago, but he didn't really talk about it much because he wanted to understand it fully first, experiment with it, make sure it has no health issues. And now that he's done all of that, he's officially brought it to market and made them available for sale. It's a recessive gene that popped out of wild type genetics. So like Fasciolatus, Turkmenicus, Afghanicus, those are wild types. I'm not sure which wild types they popped out of for him. It might've been the Turkmenicus or Fasciolatus because the gecko does have a lighter overall color tone and appearance. And Fasciolatus and Turkmenicus do have a lighter color tone and appearance as well. However, the telltale signs of a cypher leopard gecko are a reverse stripe that goes down the back as a baby and a reverse stripe that goes down the door dorsal or the top of the tail as a baby, which is really unique. We've never seen that in leopard geckos anywhere else. And also lighter pigment or coloration to the overall gecko. That's why a lot of people are excited to get this into tangerine in hopes that it brightens up the gecko similar to what a white and yellow does, except it's a new genetic for us to play around with. Other people are really excited to see if we can create a tri-stripe leopard gecko by using a bold stripe to have two stripes down the lateral sides of the animal or along its rib cage and then that one dorsal stripe down the top that the cypher is characteristic for to create a three-striped animal now cyphers do look completely different as adults than babies they completely lose their striping effect on the back and the tail but time and selective breeding will tell if we can make this new gene into a very desirable trait Lastly, the most rare and least known of leopard gecko morphs at the moment is the red devil. Now, I hated that I had to put two reds in this list because it takes a little bit away from number one, right? So the red diamond is number five and the red devil is number one and that can confuse people, but they are very different bloodlines. The red devil is a bloodline that is coming from SFF geckos. I believe he's in Korea, correct me if I'm wrong. They have some of the best quality stuff in Asia, guys. I don't know what they're doing to their geckos over there, but their geckos look amazing. He actually sent me official certificate of what makes up the Red Devil bloodline because there was a lot of confusion and a lot of people were thinking it was like a Mandarin Bell or a Blood Bell or something like that. Now, he doesn't reveal all his secrets, but he does say that it is not Mandarin, nor is it blood genetics, but he actually used electric tangerine genetics to create this line mixed with Bell. He claims that it is 100% Bell and 100% free of rainwater or tremper albino genetics and i believe his original line he even claims is 100 percent free of eclipse so as of right now it's just a pure bright orangey red bell albino tangerine gecko it's the perfect base form for anybody in America to take that gecko and really ramp up and start a red devil, white and yellow, red devil, black knight, red devil, fasciolatus, even red devil eclipse project in the United States and really encourage, motivate, and excite the leopard gecko hobby that we still have so many color palettes, saturation qualities, and genetic potential for this wonderful species that we work with. So what did you guys think about this video? I thought it was pretty cool putting it together and just getting in idea for some of the most top sought morphs in the world. Now you might be asking yourself, Frank, why are you wearing this ridiculous hat? It's because I love it. It has a real Jurassic Park vibe to it. It blocks out the hot Arizona sun and it has these holes in the side for ventilation. All around great product. Keep an eye out for our next genetic video, which is gonna be the top five most strangest leopard gecko combinations in existence. My name is Frank, hats off to you. And I thank you for coming along in this journey. Until next time, my friends, stay safe and have a geeky gecko great day. Peace.